is me, Sonia LC here. Welcome to my video. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a mukbang video. I have done quite a few of these in the past. You guys always request them and they're honestly one of my fave videos to film. I don't know why I don't do more of them, but I'm bringing them back today. Oh, I almost forgot something. Got some rice. Oh yes, baby. Look at that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. If you want to, you should get yourself some food to eat as well. You can put me in front of you and we can just eat this together. With these mukbang videos, I don't really cut them down too much. I like to keep them long and raw and real. So um, yeah, here we go. Here's all my food. Let's do a haul. This is Pad C U, and all this stuff is from a place called Araya's Thai Cuisine. I used a Grubhub and I literally mentioned for two seconds Grubhub in a vlog and so many of you guys used my link and I was like, oh my god I had credits because some of you guys had used my code and I was like, dude, let's film a freaking mukbang So if you guys want to use my Grubhub code you get like ten dollars that goes towards food Which is awesome because with Postmates the code only goes towards delivery not sponsored If you want to use my code, I get food, you get food it's a way to win situation for us all. But let's do a haul. I got all this stuff from Arias Thai Cuisine, which I first went to in Seattle, which is um, a city that I used to live very close to. So this is Pad CU. This is, I already ate two of them. I'm sorry, when it first came, I just, I couldn't wait. These are like wrapped tofu cream cheese thingies. And um, there, it comes with this sauce. And then we also have um, just some chill rice over here. I don't know if I'm gonna be touching that too much, but you know. And then this was in the dessert section. So it was coconut juice. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, they'll give me a, a can of coconut juice, but it comes in a freaking coconut. So uh, yeah, we have that. And then I also, you know, have my water stay hydrated. And if you guys have noticed, this says plant milk on it. This is going to be available um, probably by the time this video is up on stillasony.com for my birthday because I was like, um, I kind of want to have something up for my birthday and I really like the idea of this. So, um, yeah, this will be available in a hoodie and a shirt. So, sorry for the promo, but I'm very excited because I'm about to turn 20 and I don't really know what I'm going to do on my birthday. Probably going to, like, get food and maybe go to the beach. That would be my ideal birthday. But, um, yeah, let's get started with the mukbang. Y'all, you have no idea how hard it was waiting for filming time to eat this. Mm. I'm gonna try and eat some broccoli, y'all. This is so good. The way that they... I've cooked this. Ooh, these are very slippery. Come on. Come on, come on. Mm. So good. Comes with carrots. This colorful cabbage stuff has really stained the noodles, I noticed. Some of the noodles are a little bit purple. Mmm. Very nice, very crunchy. Oh. So guys, the main reason why I was inspired to film mukbang, not only because I had some Grubhub credits, but because someone named Ben wrote an essay about my mukbangs. On one of them, for my, it was my veggie grill chicken sandwich mukbang. I'll link it down below if you wanna watch the video. But it was very, it was very well done, and he was really nice in the essay. And I was like, wow. I don't know if he'll let me link it or not, because um, obviously it's his work. But he sent it to me over Google Docs. I was reading it. It was like very, it was there was so much insight gone into just me eating food, and I was like, I'm kind of honored. So thank you, Ben, for inspiring this video. Um, but yeah, you know, ooh, look at that. Like greasy noodle. Mmm. I thought that this didn't come with a straw at first, and I was like, how am I supposed to drink this? But it does come with the straw. Um, I know a lot of people will get mad at me for having straws, but I, I have looked into aluminum straws and I will be getting one soon, so please don't yell at me. I'm trying. I'm learning. I'm learning. Mmm. But actually, guys. On my Instagram and on my Snapchat for just like topics to talk about while I am eating because I feel like that makes the mukbang more interesting. Otherwise, during the mukbang, I'm just like, hey, so what have I been doing recently? Um, the other day I like, it took a really big shit. 
Um, but yeah, let's look at let's look at the topics you guys asked. Ooh, we have one. Your top five favorite vegan spots in LA. First one. This is so hard. I really like Real Food Daily, you guys. Real Food Daily is an awesome restaurant. And the owner, Adeline, is so nice. Super nice. Love the place. Everyone that works there is really nice. Also, they've really revamped the restaurant. Like, they're always adding new stuff. But also, just the interior is cute. And, yeah, I definitely recommend you visit it. Even if you just want to, like, get a coffee. They have coffees. They have ice cream now. Mmm. So much good stuff. Oh, and they have milkshakes. I always get their cookies and cream milkshake. Because it's just like, I'm like, oh, it's vegan. It kind of tastes a little bit healthy, but still unhealthy. You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Mm. And number two, probably veggie grill because veggie grill is my OG. If I just want some vegan, I don't want to say shit food because it's not shit food. It's like good, it's good food, it's quality food, but it's like basically vegan fast food. Um, veggie roll, so good. I mean, it's not super fast food. I don't know. It's still good. It's the vegan equivalent of fast food, I feel like. Um, but it's so good. Quality food, it's like... I love talking about food while eating food. It's like, same. Mm. Number three, My Vegan Gold. Love that place. It's great. 10 out of 10, would recommend you guys go to it. It's like, um, I don't know what kind of restaurant it is. I thought it was a Thai restaurant, but they have like burgers and pad thai and like, oh, oh geez. This is, this is just a big, big chunk of noodle. But they have burgers, pad thai, like chicken nuggets, all vegan, of course. Um, number four, it's gotta be this place called Green Leaves Vegan. It's also like kind of a Thai restaurant, but kind of not. Number five, there's this, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> there's this place called Cruiser Pizza that is so good. And it's like, it's just a little, little tiny restaurant, like super teeny. I think the main purpose of it is that you like order, you order it to deliver. Um, it's a vegan pizza place. So good. I've only had their pizza twice, but so good. Let me know if you'd watch a pizza mukbang with that. Um, but yeah, so fucking good. And I don't know. I just have a lot of good stuff. The only thing is that I literally live like 0 0.5 miles out of their delivery range. I know you're like, Sonia, just use Postmates. Okay. Postmates adds like $27 to your order, even if you order just like one thing. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but when you ever get Postmate, this is such a first world problem. It'll be like taxes and fees and it's so much. And then the delivery fee is so much. And I'm like, what is this tax and fee? Like, I don't understand. But you know, you pay for convenience, so I understand. But when you deliver, like directly from a restaurant, it's usually way cheaper than delivering through Postmates or Grubhub. Sorry, Grubhub, I'm subtweeting you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just, that's just my thoughts. But Grubhub does have cheaper delivery, I've noticed. Not sponsored, but y'all, y'all should sponsor me, I'm just saying. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Look at these carrots. That's my top five. Let's. Let's look and see what else you guys are asking. Set down the chopsticks, sip some coconut water. It tastes way better when it's in the little coconut, you guys. Okay, someone says choosing your first job or any job at all. Okay, so my first job was when, I guess my first real job that I had to do taxes on, that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, cause I guess my first job was babysitting. I babysat when I was like 12, which I was, no offense, not really the best babysitter because I didn't know how to handle children at 12. I was still a child. Disciplining children is hard. Like the kids I was babysitting, they just, they were young. They were younger than I was obviously, but they were not really well behaved. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. 
<laughs> which like yeah i'm 12. first real job was with the ecology youth corps am i allowed to say that i think i am um but i picked up garbage off the side of the road for a month and i made a few thousand dollars at 14 in a month so i was like yeah like <laughs> i was so pumped i felt super rich i was like this is great and i think that, that what that company is doing is really cool so like i think you have to be between 14 and 18 to work there um to work with them and if you're older then you can still work there but you can't work the summer shift like they had a winter shift that was for adults and this this is gonna sound weird but i actually really enjoyed picking up garbage and getting paid for it because i'm the kind of person that really likes to you know help the environment um and i felt like i was doing something good and something that had a purpose and i would always find cool things and it was just like me and like six other people we were just like we'd meet at this one parking lot at 7 a.m this guy would just drive us around and we would he would drop us off at different parts of the freeway we'd all have little sections and like i picked up so much trash like it was cool but it was gross to see how much trash people really throw like out there and um it was also cool because during our lunch breaks we would just go he would take us to a random park and just be like we're gonna eat lunch here and it was in my hometown of bellingham and i discovered so many parks that i had never seen before apparently bellingham is the city with the most parks per square mile in all of the united states which didn't know that so if you didn't know that go visit bellingham go visit some parks but yeah that was cool um i guess choosing that at school they announced it they were like hey if you want to do this job you'll get paid i don't know how much per hour it was but it was like for being a fucking teen good mm. Mm, it's a crunchy piece of broccoli And so I was like, I'm down, like that sounds cool. And so um, I applied, went through the interview process, got it. I guess for choosing that job, I just chose it because I could make money. <laughs> and I was trying to get money. Like I've always, ever since I was really young, wanted to have my own job, wanted to have my own money, wanted to be just making money. So that was the main reason why I chose that job. And then I worked that job and I tried to apply for another job. I tried to work at McDonald's, I tried to work at Starbucks, I tried to work at Aeropostale. Like I applied everywhere. Obviously no one was gonna hire a 15 year old. McDonald's apparently does, but I don't know, they didn't hire me. So rest in peace. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make money. I was like, dude, I made that much in a month, like let's let's keep going, let's keep making money. Hmm. So good. <clears throat> but um yeah. So then I turned 16 and I was like, you know what, I can finally start making money again, probably. Because 16 is like a hiring age for a lot of places. So I applied literally everywhere that could hire a 16 year old in Bellingham. I applied everywhere. I didn't know how I was going to get there. Didn't have a car yet. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to make some money. So I wasn't very picky. And I think with your first job, you can't be too picky unless you're like, you know, older. But when you're really young, like you can't really be too picky. I mean, obviously don't do something that is you can't physically do or is making you uncomfortable. But, yeah, so I applied everywhere that would hire a 16 year old and I heard back from two. That was a grocery store, which I ended up working at, and Dairy Queen. Had an interview with Dairy Queen. The guy was really interesting. 
who was like, why do you want a job this young? And I was like, what the heck? Don't a lot of 16 year olds work at Dairy Queen? Like I thought this was a place. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I waited like three weeks. I didn't hear back from Dairy Queen. Then I got an interview with the grocery store and um, it was this lovely guy who he retired, but love him. He loved me. Like I literally got the job later that day. He called me and was like, do you want the job? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so basically my job was cart pusher, bag groceries, deal with customers, all that stuff. That job I didn't really like, but then I also did like in a weird way. Um, it just gave me something to do. Um, but I was in school and I was also doing YouTube at this time. So that was a little bit difficult juggling all of that because I wanted to be successful in my YouTube career and I also wanted to, you know, be successful in school and I also wanted to be making money. <laughs> Duh! It's a little bit hard to juggle all of that. I think I started my YouTube channel when I had just turned 17. So that means that my, I think my three year anniversary on YouTube is coming up. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Thank you guys for watching. Um, so that was my second job. And I think that I was pretty good at the job. I tried really hard. I was always on time or early. Um, I only called in sick couple times when I was actually sick um but yeah so that job gave me something to do I didn't make a story time video on why I quit because I used to do story time videos all the time um but basically my boss was really rude to me so I was like okay I'm putting in my two weeks right now and my dad was like bruh like don't don't do this and I was like dad I have to at the time I was like, I was doing YouTube. YouTube was gonna be my full-time job at that point. Um, which like, ah, oh, it was so scary because my channel was so teeny, like super, I had a super teeny channel. And I was like, I'm just gonna have YouTube be my full-time job. My last day at this job was on my two year anniversary of that job. So July 2nd, 2016 was my last day at that work. I don't know why I remember that day so specifically. But I was like, holy crap, what am I doing? And it's crazy because looking back, I just remember I used to work so much and I would like, I was so tired all the time because I was just working so much. And my paychecks were like, like nothing. Like the amount that I would make in two weeks, I'm like, I don't know, just compared to the amount I make now, I was so shook. It taught me a lot. I didn't have money to get my first car there, but it was a little scary of me for me to just be doing YouTube because at that point, I wasn't really making any money from YouTube. I mean, I was making a tiny bit, but like barely any a month. And so I really cracked down and I was like filming every day. I would get up. I would do live streams, I would film, and this was back when I lived in Bellingham um, with my dad. So I didn't have to pay rent, which was nice, um, and my dad didn't have me pay rent, which I really appreciate. And, you know, I was just kind of going to school, like, doing my thing. Okay guys, sorry, my camera decided to stop recording for some reason, um, I was talking about how YouTube was my full-time job. Okay, that was really scary. Um, but I guess not too scary. I was just kind of scared. And I was just paranoid that like YouTube wouldn't work out, that no one would watch me. And <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like I really cracked down and it was something that I really enjoyed doing and just made me happy. And I was like so excited to be, I don't know, just like have people enjoy watching my videos. I started posting more on my ASMR channel. I even started a vlog channel. So, yeah. I guess with choosing your first job, that was the longest answer ever to that question, but it's okay because in mukbangs, we get rambly, we talk about stuff. 
-mm. But I guess you can't be too picky. But have it be something you, you know, can work into your schedule. Maybe it's not your favorite thing. You know, bagging groceries was not my favorite thing. Pushing carts in the rain was not my favorite thing. Um, getting paid minimum wage was not my favorite thing. I remember. I was so, sorry. <laughs> I remember I was so excited because I looked at my paycheck and I was like, oh my gosh, it says I'm making more an hour. Like, I think it was raised by like 15 cents. And I was like, oh, maybe they give me a raise. Like, I don't know, I get, I've been here for a while, so maybe. And it was because it was the new year and the minimum wage had just gone up. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay, I see you. I guess. <laughs> that was fun. But yeah, so um, that job taught me a lot. Inspired me to get out of my hometown. Do other things. Not saying there's anything wrong with people who work for minimum wage or work, you know, at 9 to 5. I, I guess that would be considered 9 to 5. Um, because that's awesome. And if you enjoy doing that. That's awesome, and that's honest work, and that's like, I don't know, like, that's awesome. There were some people that worked there, that had worked there, literally since they were my age, like, since they were 16, like, when I had started, and just stayed with the company on Gone Up, and they loved it so much, and like, it was awesome for them. For me, I was like, bruh, no, not doing that, but, um, yeah, a lot of awesome people that worked there, so... Made quite a few friends. I just learned a lot. So yeah. Can't really be picky with your first job because it's your first job and if you're young, you don't have a lot of experience. Not a lot of places are going to hire you. It's just funny to me that I literally like applied to so many places, only heard back from two. Because they were like, bitch, you're 16. What, what are you doing here? Why, why do you, what, no. Like we need someone experienced. Um, but yeah, advice on what to do in rainy slash cold slash gray days. This bad weather in winter in general makes me feel so sad and anxious. Lots of love from Spain. Oh my gosh, I want to go to Spain so bad. Lots of love from the US. I just choked on a noodle for two seconds. Um, but I guess, okay, I was literally feeling that. I know in LA it doesn't rain that much, but it was raining here yesterday and it's currently raining. If you guys can hear in the background, it is raining. Which at first I liked. And then it reminded me of my hometown. I remember what it was like in my hometown growing up when it was literally cold and wintry all the time. Like, even when I visited my family, I was like, I can't do anything. I can't go outside because it's four degrees. <laughs> wasn't actually four, but basically. And I think finding some hobbies to do inside is what helps me. Like, you know, making my area a comfy little space that I can stay warm. Like, I don't know, making your room somewhere that you really enjoy or your apartment or wherever you live, whatever you have, you have a corner, make your corner cute so that you can look at it and you can feel soothed and you can feel like this is my space to like live my life and do cute things. Maybe if you have something you've always wanted to do, like let's say you've always wanted to like paint portraits of people you could start doing that mm. look at that it's like tofu i think there's is that pineapple and corn i don't even know what's going on in here and there's some vegan cream cheese in here but yeah making your area that you live in cute so that you look at it you feel soothed maybe put up some photos of sunsets and stuff but yeah, winter sadness is definitely a thing. That's like the main reason why I wanted to move out of my hometown was because like winter time is just so depressing. Yeah, make your area cute. Find something cute to do. Hang out with friends, do what you can. Mm. This is so good. I like the cream cheese. I can do without the corn. The tofu is a little bit weird too. 
but still good still still would eat am currently eating okay let's open some snapchats people are just replying to my selfie thank you guys but i need some questions what's your favorite vegan food probably lasagna so good how the fuck does one look crusty <laughs> me Hi, I love watching your videos and I was wondering if one of your topics could be how to be better at socializing. I'm homeschooled but do some stuff with like groups, but I never feel comfortable enough to talk to them because I've known each other forever. Ooh, I would say that a lot of the fear is really in your own head, at least for me personally. I know sometimes kids can be mean, but in my head, like I'm always nervous to socialize or say hi to people, but when I do, it ends up being just fine. So I'd say just be nice, introduce yourself, make eye contact. Be a good listener. I don't know. Just be nice. If you don't click with someone, you don't click with them. That's life. But yeah, I don't know. I just find that being friendly and listening to people and acknowledging them and making eye contact with them just, you know, makes everything better. Maybe the other per maybe the other people are shy. Maybe they're too shy to say hi to you. Maybe they're like, oh my gosh, I'm scared that this girl's gonna be like, not cool because she hasn't known us. But you never know. Talk about safe sex, love your videos, and I think it would spread awareness. Sorry, my titty is out. <laughs> Same. My refrigerator just, just turned on. WID, bro. Okay, but um, safe sex, guys. Put a cap on it or don't do it. <laughs> I watched this video um, by this lady. Her name is Shan Booty on YouTube. And she made this really interesting video about how she got chlamydia. And it's really good, you guys should watch it. She literally goes on Hollywood Boulevard, really close to where Stella and I used to live because I was watching the video, I recognized that place instantly. I was like, oh my God. But um, she goes on there, she has all these signs where she's talking about how she got chlamydia. And how and how she was in a relationship and all this stuff and how she is like fighting to combat you know STD stigma and um, how she originally went on birth control because she was in a committed relationship so she thought like a monogamous relationship with one person and they've gotten tested before so she's decided to go on birth control not use condoms anymore and she ended up getting chlamydia because the guy was cheating on her as of age um but yeah and then it was just kind of like a big psa to get tested often which she did do but she didn't, you know, think to use a condom because she thought that this guy was like committed to her, which is such a, that's such a sad way to find out. But then she ended up doing a free health screening and found out she had chlamydia. Yeah, basically moral of the story is get tested often. If you're in a relationship with someone, stay faithful to them. Like if you want to be you know, not monogamous or polyamorous or something, that should be something that you discuss with your partner or that you, you know, at least you're like, okay, like, I'm not gonna be in a relationship with this person. Get tested often, use a condom if you're doing it. I also read this really interesting article it was on like a Planned Parenthood Twitter page. It was about having safe sex if you're in the LGBT community because literally in schools they never talk about safe sex with um, like the same gender, you know? <gasps> and they only talk about straight sex, which I think is dumb. Maybe in schools they've updated it, but I don't think so. Cause there's so many gay kids, like I'm sorry. There's, <laughs> there's so many, which is amazing. And that's cool, but they need to be taught safe sex. Like they shouldn't have to fend for themselves and be like, what the heck do I even do? So um, 
Yeah, I'll try and find the article and link it because I don't really want to explain it. I'm not an expert on it, but I'll try and link the article um, so that you guys can, you know, do safe sex stuff. So with getting tested, it's usually free, so do it. Or it's like very inexpensive. And if a place you go to, it isn't free, look for a free clinic. Like you don't, you usually don't have to pay. Or at least your insurance should cover it. I know sometimes, um, I, when I get tested, I don't really go to Planned Parenthood because they always charge a lot for it. Or there's like fancy places in LA that are like, get tested for everything for $150. Like, no thanks. I'd much rather do it for free. So yeah, a lot of free clinics. I think a good one, I think the hospital does it and then like the LGBT center does free tests. Which, I'd never heard of the LGBT center until I moved to LA. I don't know if that's just an LA thing or if like there's one everywhere, but that's kind of cool. I didn't even know that was a, that was a thing. So good, so good. If I could quit my job and eat you all day shit, I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Well, anyways, you guys, honestly, I'm feeling kind of full. I know it looks like I didn't eat a lot. I always get comments on my mukbangs that are like, you didn't eat anything. I ate some noodles and some of this shit. So I'm going to package this up, save it for like when I get hungry at midnight or something. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed this long ass mukbang. If you watched until the end, comment what food you ate or comment which one of these things looks the yummiest out of all the things that I ate. Be sure to check out stellasonia.com for updated merch items. We also have um, underwear available now, so check it out. But yeah, be sure to give this video a like as well. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all that stuff. I've also been live streaming on Live Me every day. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.